What's up my favorite PewTubers? So today we're going to be doing an update video as I've completely tacked out my 1911 build. So welcome back my beautiful PewTubers. I hope you guys are having an awesome day today. I don't know how many of you saw this because I had to delete all the build videos back in March, but we did an 80% 1911 build last year around this time. And I do have all the videos re-uploaded to GunStreamer in full 30. I will put links below for that. It's a complete tutorial series on how to take an 80% 1911 from start to finish. It's about a 10 part series. Um, it's not very difficult as long as you take your time and follow along with it. Now, you know, throughout that series, I did mess up the original barrel, I accidentally filed it out of spec. I didn't need to file it, I was just being stupid. So you'll probably yell at the screen a little bit, but hey, it makes it more entertaining, right? Since that point in time, the only thing that I ever regretted about the 1911 build was I originally wanted to do this on a frame that had a tactical rail on it, you know, that had a Picatinny rail on the frame, but I didn't get one of those. So I started looking around and I found these awesome little, and I'm sure you guys have seen these before and I've seen them before, but I've never tried them before. But it's got these grip panels here that goes along the sides and adds a pick rail to the 1911. And it seems pretty legit so far. In addition to that, I went ahead and threw a light on it just so we can see what it looks like and if it's gonna be operable or not. Also, Will from the Daily Shooter hit me up and said, hey bro, I got this 1911 compensator from Valkyrie Dynamics. You wanna take a look at it? And so big shout out to the Daily Shooter. He sent out this uh, Valkyrie Dynamics compensator for me to test and review. So thank you, brother, I really appreciate it. If you're not familiar with his channel, I'll put a link below, just go subscribe, dude. He's an awesome guy. Anywho, I wanted to see you know, what this would feel like with this grip set on here with the tack light and all that and with this compensator on there. Let's dive up close, let's take a look at this and let's just see is this too much or should I have just left it alone? All right, guys, so here we are up close with the 80% 1911 that we built last year. Like I mentioned guys, if you guys are interested in building one of these, they are, you know, a little bit tough, but it's not that bad as long as you pay attention to the instructions and take your time. So if you are interested in that, I'll put a link below to a playlist so you can go check all that out. So anyways, we have the Recover Tactical CC3P cover here. It's a grip panel set as well as a tactical rail. Now let's take, a, let's take a look at this real fast. We'll get up close. I have the uh, Surefire XH35 weapon light on there. I did a review on this light not too long ago and I'm really enjoying it. So basically the way this works is you have a screw here, here, and here, here, as well as on this side here and right here. And all, all it is is two halves that come apart. And then these little grip panels here are inserts. Now, one thing that you'll notice right off the bat is the although it adds a rail to it, it's a little bit on the low side. You're gonna notice that your, your switches are a little bit low versus if there was an actually an integrated rail onto this. But I will say this, these little guys right here are a little bit too slippery, I think. They're not bad, but I really feel like they could have done a better job with the texturing on these grip panels. Maybe they do offer um, other inserts that have more aggressive texturing to them, but it's not super bad. I just kind of was like, oh, I kind of expected something a little bit more. It doesn't really drastically change the ergonomics of the gun. I'm still able, make sure this is clear, I'm still able to press out and pull that trigger without that front sight moving. And that's the most important thing when it comes to any type of grip. But overall, it's it's holding up really well. Um, you might wanna put some blue Loctite on these guys right here, and maybe some on these as well, um, because this grip panel is starting to kind of come back out a little bit after um, about three or four magazines that I put through it. But otherwise, I'm really digging the way that it looks. You know, when you see these online and you see like the professional pictures that the company takes of it, they almost look cheap. I don't know how it looks on my camera, but I can tell you that in my hand, they don't feel cheap, nor do they really look too cheap on the gun. It almost has a very salient arms 
way about it. It almost kind of feels like that. And so for that, I mean, I, I it has a very nice stealthy look about it. And that's something that I really dig about it. Now moving up front here, this is the Valkyrie Dynamics GR1 muzzle brake. The muzzle brake, you don't even need a threaded barrel, which is really nice. And it just slips on and you click it into place. It just replaces the, the standard bushing that you have. And when it recoils, it just comes on back like this. Now I can say I'm not 100% certain if this is actually you know, mitigating any of the recoil or not. And I can't really tell a huge difference, you know, with it in the hand, but we're gonna have to look at the slow-mo footage here in a minute. And we're gonna see like, does that really look like it reduces muzzle flip? I honestly personally cannot tell. These muzzle brakes are not very expensive. They're like, I think $40 or something like that. I'll put links below for all this stuff if it's something you wanna check out. Um, let's jump up top real fast. Let's go over some of the slow motion footage of how this performed at the range. Then I'm gonna give you my final impression impressions of the Recover Tactical CC3P grip as well as the Valkyrie Dynamics Compensator. Back up top. There we have it guys in all its glory. Dude, I'm I'm actually really digging this. Um, I know that some people out there who are 1911 purists are gonna be like, dude, it looks gay, it looks dumb. I honestly don't give a crap what you think. This is my YouTube channel and I do what I want. Bye Felicia, I'm just messing with you guys. Anywho, yeah, it looks kind of cool. It really does. Now, as far as the grip panels are concerned, I, I would like to see a little bit of more texturing around in here, just because I feel like when you're sweating and things like that it tends to slip so I'd like to see some textured panels they might offer textured panels like inserts and things I just don't know mine didn't come with any of those so I can't say 100% as far as the light it, I love how it gives me the option if I want amount of light the downside is because they're adding this on it drops the light down probably about a half inch or so and you can see you know the where the switches are it's a little bit difficult to get your finger on there, especially from this side. So you really got to reach down. And with the Surefire XH35 on a Glock or any other type of weapon that has an integrated rail, I don't have to reach down like that. So, I mean, I think if we put an Enforce light on there, um, because the paddles do kind of, you know, they're pretty wide. I think it would be a lot easier to manipulate. I will have to try that in a future video. Overall, I mean, I'm really enjoying this grip panel. I'm probably gonna leave it on there. So the Valkyrie Dynamics um, compensator in the hand, I really just couldn't tell a difference, you know? Um, it felt like it had the same amount of recoil, but you know, looking at the footage, it's hard for me to tell. Maybe you guys can tell me. Did you guys see a difference between the comp and no comp? Because I didn't, I just didn't see it. You know, like even with a Glock running, you know, 115 grain ammunition, I can tell a difference in muzzle flip, standard pressure 115 grain, and you're not theoretically supposed to be able to tell a difference with 115 grain on a Glock compensator. But with this one, I just couldn't tell it. I still think it looks pretty cool. I might take it off, I might not, I'm not sure. They're only 39 or $40 or something like that. So it's not like these compensators are super expensive. You're not gonna break the bank just trying one out. Now, aside from the light being too low and maybe the compensator just maybe not meeting my expectations, I'm really 100% satisfied with the way this build turned out. So if we pretend that the muzzle brake is not there, I am still satisfied with this build. I actually really like the grip panel set. I wish it was a little more grippy, but it's still grippy enough for me to shoot it. I'm, I'm a kind of guy that's very skeptical of things. When people say something is awesome, I kind of be like, well, let me find out for myself instead of just taking everyone's word for it. And one of the biggest things I always heard all the time before I got a 1911 was that 1911s are the most accurate guns most accurate handguns ever. I don't think the gun is inherently more accurate than a Glock. I do think, however, the weight of it, the trigger, the angle of the grip, and all of those factors play together nicely, and, and they, they form this cohesiveness with the shooter, and the shooter is able to pull off shots a lot easier and a lot more accurately. Is it more accurate in my hands than a Glock? Absolutely. I mean, I'm just using iron sights, and wherever I put that front sight is where the bullet hits. So for that, I mean, I just gotta give it a big heads up. Let me know what you guys think about 1911s. Would you rather buy or build a custom 1911? I'm not talking about buying a Rock Island Armory 
or even a Sig Sauer. Or, I'm talking about custom 1911s. You want to build it or would you buy it? Let me know down in the comments, guys. If, if you guys are interested in any of these parts, I will put, just check the first link in the description if you're on YouTube. Full 30 and Gun Streamer, all the links are already there for you. But if you like this video, just go ahead and hit the like button. Subscribe if you're not already. And until next time, I love you and you guys stay sexy.